first, I want to just say a word about my journey through life, um, because my life has been very involved in the world of religions. And so I'll be referring to my experience in that journey among the religions as we go through this class. First, where was I born? I was born in Tanzania, East Africa, in Tanzania. Among a people called the Zanaki. Among a people called the Zanaki. My father and mother were pioneer missionaries with a church called the Mennonite Church, sort of like the Baptist. Among these people called the Zanaki, who had never heard of the gospel before, they had never seen or heard of a Bible. Um, there was no literacy, no one could read or write. In fact, no modern medicine. 80% of the babies died by the time they were two years old. Um, it was a very challenging circumstance. And my parents moved into that community, which was not Christian, as I said, they'd never heard of Christ, but a very religious community. Um, they believed in spirits and in demons and in ancestral powers. They believed in God, but that God had gone on a journey and would never come back again. Um, when my father and mother came to live among the Zanaki, they of course needed to get permission. And so they met with the chief of that tribe. And the chief assigned them to a hill, which was called Bumangi. They assigned them to Bumangi Hill, which was a hill filled with white ant hills. White ants destroy houses. And white ants live in hills that they make. So all across Bumangi Hill, there were these little hills where the white ants were, okay? And the queen ant would live at the base of the hill. So the queen ant, the mother ant, would live at the base of the hill. She became very, very big because all the little ants fed her. Uh, food. So she got bigger and bigger, and the bigger she got, the more babies she could create, and consequently, the more ants that there were. So the chief assigned Bumangi Hill to my father. Why did he put, and, and mother, why did he assign them that hill for the place for our house to be built and the church? Because he was not sure that the Christian faith would be good for the Zanaki people. So he decided to put my parents on a hill where the white ants are so that if the gospel is bad for the Zanaki people, then the white ants would destroy our houses. Why would they destroy the houses? Because the ancestors, the ancestor spirits who lived everywhere, they would orchestrate, they would arrange for the white ants to destroy our houses. That's what they would do. If, however, the gospel was good news for the Zanaki people, then my father would destroy the white ant hills. So it would be a competition to see which will win. If the white ants destroyed our houses, then we knew the ancestors had determined that the gospel is bad news. If, on the other hand, my father destroyed the white ant hills, then the gospel is good news for the Zanaki. And guess what happened? I was back there at Bumangi just a few two years ago with my wife and I, with three of our 
older grandchildren. And they were explaining to us how that when my father came to that hill, he dug down deep into the base of each anthill and he found each queen ant in each anthill. And what do you think he did to the queen ants? He killed them. I remember as a little boy, you know, quite regularly, uh, one of the workmen would come to our house with another queen ant that they had found at the base of another hill. Great, big, fat queen ant. And they would then burn that queen ant to death. And so the whole white ant hill would collapse. And so the white ant hills died, and the church and the school and the houses on Bumangi Hill flourished. So the whole tribe knew that the ancestors had determined that the gospel is good news for the Zanaki people. In fact, when we were with them, they said that this is a sign of what the gospel did. Because they said the gospel would go down to the roots of our culture and it would destroy some of the evils in our culture. And instead of the evils being centered in our culture, new life would flow, new life which came from Jesus that we read about here in 1 John, just as we began our session. This word of life, not the word of death and destruction. So that's where I grew up, uh, in that sort of a society. Um, and uh, then one day, and I saw a church being formed, and many people believing in Jesus and seeing their lives being transformed, and a wonderful fellowship of believers developed. And one day, when I was a little boy, Jesus also called me. He was calling the Zanaki people, and one day he also called me. And I believed and became part of his life-giving community known as the church. And so as I speak about world religions, I speak as someone who believes in Jesus, you know, and uh, as someone who believes that Jesus is good news for all people, no matter what our religious background or heritage or ideology might be, that as Jesus walks across the path of our culture, he is good news. It's a very deep conviction I have for many reasons. One is what Jesus has done for me, but also what I saw him doing among the Zanaki people as we lived and worked among them. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TBS Ministry. For more information, please visit tbsseminary.com. So, when I was 15 years old, I moved to the USA, to, to the United States, with my brother Joseph. And that was a very different culture. Uh, we were with the Mennonite Church, and at that time, the Mennonite Church in America was going through a very conservative experience. Um, they believed the Bible is God's word. They tried to follow the teachings of the Bible very explicitly. For example, Paul writes to the Corinthians that a woman should have her head veiled, and so every Mennonite woman wore a veiling in her head, on her head. Some even wore a veiling when they went to sleep at night, you know, in case they would want to pray at night that they would have their heads covered. So it was a religious community, a Christian community, that was very concerned about applying every word, every detail of the Bible to life such as, for example, women wearing the prayer head veiling, which is, of course, true in many parts of the world. But that's the kind of community in which I, um, I lived as a teenager in North America. The particular church district that I, that I, that I was a member of, which was where, where my father and mother came from, um, we had a very conservative bishop, and he believed that a necktie will take you to hell. Um, they said a necktie is like a devil's toe rope. And if you wear a necktie, the devil will just get a hold of that necktie and drag you to hell. Well, when I was living away from home, I wore a necktie sometimes. 
And my bishop learned about that and he was very unhappy. And so I needed to ask forgiveness of him and try to submit to his authority. So that's the kind of religious community in which I was a part of in North America. Um, very different than the people of Bumangi in Tanzania that I grew up with. Um, so I learned as a teenager that uh, religious affiliation and commitments can be very interesting and sometimes very challenging. But I did know the rock, this word that we read about this morning in the scriptures. I knew him. And so Jesus was my rock, and I knew where I stood in Christ. Uh, these kind of conservative winds didn't disturb me too much because I knew who the real rock was. In high school, I began to develop a relationship with Grace and um, shared with her very clearly that God's call on my life was to be a missionary and to share the good news of Jesus with people who had never heard of Jesus before. I was very impressed with uh, Jesus' statement shortly before his death uh, in uh, Matthew, uh, 14, Matthew 24, 14, that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all nations and then the end will come. And I knew that the all nations included people of every religion on earth, that God's grand plan is that all people, regardless of your background, have the opportunity to believe in Jesus. I believe that very deeply. And my fiance and I knew that God was calling us to invest our lives in sharing the good news with people who have never yet heard of Jesus. And so after our marriage, we were in prayer and discerning where that should be. And it became very clear to us that God was calling us to go to Somalia in northeastern Africa, which was a 100% Muslim country. And so that's the next stage in my journey with people of many religions. First of all, Bumangi in Tanzania as a child growing up there among the Zanaki people. Okay? And then in the USA, within the Mennonite church experience, with its conservatism and so forth, learning what it meant to be a follower of Jesus within that culture and within that situation.